Okay, now that we've worked out our sound issues, because of course we couldn't have a live broadcast without sound issues, welcome to another installment of Stephen Follows Instructions. Today, today I will be doing something called Customize Your MySQL Database in Docker. So, here's what's up. I have a Docker installation for Grasshopper. Docker is a way of putting applications into virtual containers so that these containers can run on any computer anywhere that has Docker installed. They're really useful for running applications in the cloud or on different kinds of desktops, etc. Now, I use different containers for my application. In one container, I have the Grasshopper application itself, the programs, the web pages, things like that. And in another container, I have the database itself. Now, right now, the way I've set it up is I just use a standard database image. And then in the startup process, I install the uh, the uh, SQL, Structured Query Language, definition of my database. But that's kind of awkward, and I have to use complicated instructions, and I'll, I'll show you what I mean. Let, let's go to my Docker container, and if I had been smart, I would have preloaded it, but I wasn't smart. So, uh, let's see, Stephen Downs Docker. Right, so uh, let's make sure site docker dot com. Oh, maybe not. Okay, let's grasshopper. Uh, let's get rid of my name. We'll get there eventually. Grasshopper. Oh, it's correcting for grasshopper. <laughs> All right. All right. So here, here's the uh, GitHub, and that should link us to the Docker container. Here we go. So here's my Docker image downs grasshopper. Now this is the one I have my code in, right? So to run the Docker image. First, you have to download this Docker Compose file, no big deal. Then you have to make an init directory and you have to download the SQL and then you run the Docker Compose. What does my Docker Compose look like? Well, I'll show you. Here's my Docker Compose file. So, here's the service, this is the database. You can see I use my SQL latest right and then there's the stuff on it so and then here's the docker the uh, the uh, grasshopper docker and you see what has to happen is when grasshopper is building it somehow installs my database for me and that's really awkward and really not how it should be done so here's, here's the uh, Docker file for Grasshopper. And, you know, it's, uh, I can't even remember how I'm loading my database in. That's how bad it is. Uh, <laughs> I'm terrible, aren't I? Okay, so anyhow, Let's go back to the Docker Compose. This is my own code. Can you believe this? So, here's the, uh, yeah. See, my Docker code, my SQL code itself is in init. That's where I have people put it. And I'm just looking for where I move it from init and into the SQL. And that happens, has to happen in the build process. So is it happening here? No, because this doesn't build. It uses a predefined installation. 
This one uses the build. Uh, it has to use the instruction from the Docker file. I'll just look for it. No results. So I wonder where I'm loading it. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, here's what happens. So it's put in the init. This builds and then it starts running and it runs a project uh, runs a program called uh, test server.cgi so let's let's have a look here for it I have to find it first cgi bin server test so here is server test right and we'll scroll down here after all the testing and so on and here it's going to set up the uh, the database somewhere in here it's uh, it's actually even deeper in here uh, data dear data Right, location of site configuration files are in data. Oh, but that's different. Where do I actually create? Let's see if I can't find init in here. Oh, it's somewhere. <laughs> uh, it's looking grasshopper init. Oh, I forget where I do it. It must be down here at the bottom. Grasshopper site. Grasshopper record. Grasshopper person. Grasshopper feed. Uh, oh, I know. Let's just look for SQL. Nope. No, re no results anywhere. So let's try server test again. Oh, I don't know where it is. See, well, you see the problem, right? <laughs> okay, I wasn't expecting to be looking for it as I launched this video, but you see the problem. It's in there somewhere. Um somewhere as I'm starting up this puppy the script reads the file from the init directory and loads it into the database and specifically it loads a MySQL command maybe that's uh, no that's the only place that shows up there still looking for it right of course uh, no, I wonder where I do that. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because that's not how I want to do that. What I want to do is do all of this in the Docker file, a Docker file specifically for that database so that I don't have to root around through my code looking for where I initialize the database. And, and frankly, I'm really quite surprised that I can't find it. And I'm kind of worried what happens the next time I test it. So, <laughs> that's terrible. Uh, I wonder if I've got any viewers witnessing this debacle. Uh, I have a viewer, might just be me. Um, I wonder what my sound is like. Well, it shouldn't be echoing or anything. I can't really tell, right? So, um, but I should be all right. Uh, so here's what I'm using to verify that it should be all right. Um, and well, there we go. You see, you can see that the sound is off. So it shouldn't be echoing or anything. All right. So back to reality. All right. So let's go to this thing here. So you get a sense of just how competent I am here, which is to say, not very. Um, just like 
everybody else out there, right? I'm just muddling my way through. So many developers use Docker to spin up, that's the jargon, a local database. It makes it easy to test their code, blah, 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 right? Uh, we'll be using MySQL, it's the same for PostgreSQL. I don't want to use Postgre, so fine. Okay, first of all, some stuff on creating SQL scripts. All right, so first they're going to make a directory and then go to that directory. So, all right, well, let's follow their instructions. I have my whole great big thing, but fine. Uh, so let's let's open something clean here uh, open folder um, code projects and we'll make a new folder docker mysql there we go don't think the hyphen will be a problem and we'll go into that and select that folder uh, let's just ignore what I was doing before. Okay, so here we are. We're in this new. So let's, uh, what do I have to do? Make a directory. So the nice thing about uh, using Visual Studio Code, of course, is um, I can execute commands, but all the. All right, so first thing right here. Um, so let's have a look at this. Um, control V. No, I want it to be bigger. Why won't it get bigger? Huh. There we go. So, very first thing. So, we're going to make a directory, and it's nice that they put instructions here for us, but if we're working on a Windows system as I am, these will fail. So, uh, we don't want to do that, but that's okay. We know what they mean, right? So, um, my MySQL, well, I'm using Docker SQL. So let's make a directory called SQL scripts, and then we'll go into it. So let's make that directory. Oops. Okay, so when we're using Visual Studio Code, right, we can just click on this button. Again, I don't know how to make Visual Studio Code bigger, but um, and what was the name we were going to call it? Uh, SQL Scripts. All right. And now we're going to go into that directory, and so we'll open up a terminal, a new terminal. Here it is. It opens up in the bottom. I'm in Docker SQL, and I want to cd into SQL scripts. All right, so now we're following instructions. Finally, and we're going to write a file called create table called SQL. All right, so the raw, always better to use the raw. I've learned in the past that if I just try to copy from a file like like an HTML page like this, I get sometimes HTML artifacts. So it's better to use the raw. So what are we calling this? Insert data dot SQL. Insert data. Oops, that's not right. It's so we're in here. We're gonna make a file, new file. Insert data dot SQL. All right, and now I'm editing it, and I'll just control V to paste that in. All right, good, that looks fine. Um, yeah, looks like what we created. All right, so, and, okay, and then insert data. Oh, did I name that wrong? <laughs> Oh yeah, create table.sql and then insert data. So, okay, let's get this right. So, insert data, that's this one. Here's my code for that. And then I'm making a second file, create table. .sql and that's going to be 
all that code that I had from before. So that. And I realized I broke my own rule about copying from this, but uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. It looked like it was okay. Yeah, that looks fine. All right. Control S saves in both cases. All right, let's move on. So far, so good. Mind you, we haven't tried to run anything yet. All right execute the tree command well again i'm on windows so i don't have a tree command to verify that your two scripts exist and they're saved in the right directory kind of a neat command i've never seen that before i don't think it'll work but let, let's see what happens uh says nothing is here no subfolders exist no let's cd up and run tree sql script yeah okay so tree here isn't going to show the existing isn't going to show the files it's just going to show the folders is it do you have to put a sub command in or something no, it doesn't say. I bet you, you know, if you had tree dash f or something like that, you could show the files to. I don't know. I've no. I've never used the tree command in my life. Um, but all right, we know our files are in the right place because we just put them there. So let's go back in to SQL scripts, and here are our files. Let's see. So we're fine. All right, and we can also see it up here because on the left-hand side of Visual Studio Code is the nice display of the directory tree. All right, good. Moving on. Uh, I keep losing my... <laughs> All right, now, CD my my sql uh, okay so we're going back up again and vi docker file now again using the linux specific commands here what they, what we want to do is write a docker file to create our own docker image based on the official image of my sql which is what i was using before so okay um and it's derived and then add a database so they want us to create this file so i'm going to create the file it's called docker file and then i'll put that content in there so let's create so i have to go up again right yes right no docker my sql it doesn't say where yeah, I'm sure it does say, but I'm just being obnoxious. Right. Okay. Docker file is going to be in the top level. All right. So, SQL scripts, SQL scripts, Docker my SQL. Going to make a file, Docker file. And it still ended up in the wrong spot. Unbelievable. How, how did I manage that? Let's erase that. Up here. Making a file. Doctor. No, not there. How weird. Why won't it? Let's cut. <laughs> All right. 
Let's. How annoying is this? That it won't let me make a file in my top level directory. Huh. Maybe I have to be up a level here. Now let's see if it lets me do that. No. Well, Huh, isn't that weird? All right, okay, I'm just going to follow their instructions even more explicitly. So, so my MySQL. So I'll make the my MySQL directory. My hyphen MySQL. And I misspelled that, so I'll rename that. All right, Oops. okay, good. And then, oh, of course it ended up in here. That is the strangest thing. There's something here that I'm missing, right? But I have no I have no idea why it won't make anything in that top level. All right, I'll do it this way then. I'll rename this my my SQL and then I'll create a subdirectory of this called SQL scripts See and this is what happens when a website hijacks your right Click is you you have trouble copying stuff from it So if you're designing websites don't hijack the right click people use that for stuff All right, so I'm gonna make a subdirectory in my my SQL called SQL scripts. I'm going to move my scripts into, oh for goodness sakes. Okay. Yes. Wow, this is being really annoying. going to start over. I have no idea why it's doing that to me. And this is the stuff you run into, right? So Visual Studio Code. Let's Open workspace. My MySQL. Open. And it won't even open. Look at that. See, I'm trying to open it. Won't even open. Strange. All right. So I'm going to delete all of that and start from scratch. Okay. Um, in fact, okay, code projects, code projects, where'd you go? There you go. Docker my 
SQL, my MySQL, SQL scripts. from here now I'm gonna make a directory my MySQL I'll put it as a subdirectory under docker new directory new folder my MySQL and in this I'll make a directory called, what was it called again? SQL scripts. I hear the cat meowing in the background. <laughs> it's very distracting. New folder, SQL scripts. Okay. Now, I will open Visual Studio Code. open a folder what folder will I open uh, code projects docker let's let's risk it let's go into my mysql okay let's add a file docker Good. And we're going to add two files for our scripts. There we go. Uh, I've forgotten what they were now. But, uh, okay, here we go. Uh, create table SQL. Oh, stupid right click stealing. Come on. This is medium. They should know better. But, well, <laughs> there's a lot of things they don't know better. So, okay, here's the first file create table SQL. And let's populate that with stuff. Here's the content. Here's the content. For some reason, Control V wasn't working when I went to paste it. I don't know why. Control S to save. All right, second file we're creating. Insert data. Oh, it keeps doing this to me. Is this copy? No, it's not going to give me a tooltip because that would be too logical. we can copy this okay let's put that in here all right and save that and now we'll go to the docker file this could all be so much easier couldn't it all right docker file so here is what I want so uh, these things here are just comments so from the base image add a database and then copy this contents of the script into it good enough copy right so let's be clear about what's happening here right um, this 
env is actually it's not actually adding a database uh, you might think it's adding a database but it's not it's adding an environment variable called mysql database and then this is copying from my subdirectory into this directory. It's going to copy all the contents of the subdirectory into this directory inside the MySQL image. So you got that? We're creating the image inside a container. We're giving an environment variable to the container, which is the name of the database that we're creating. And we're copying the SQL into the container. Pretty straightforward. <laughs> it's cute. All right, so let's do that. And we don't need all the comments, and it'll be a bit clearer. And yeah, you see, this is why you got to be careful copying too. All right. Okay. So that's my actual Docker file. I don't need the comments because it's a three line Docker file. So control S. All right. Now I'll fire up my terminal, new terminal. Uh, I'm in the right directory. LS to list the files. Oh, it says Docker. And not Docker file. I called my file Docker. Let's rename that. Uh, why can't I rename that? Huh. That's weird. All right, let's create a new untitled file. Come on. I should be able to just rename it by uh, right clicking. And I should have a, a rename option here. Oh, this, this, I'm looking at the open editor section. Ah, no. <laughs> this is not really helpful. Okay. Docker rename. There we go. Docker file. And here and here. All right. It's <laughs> the silly little things that happen that can get you confused, eh? All right, now let's try listing. Whoops, not up there. Let's try listing. Right, there's my Docker file. Okay. Create your Docker image. So we have to CD into the correct directory, which we've done, and then run this command. Now, you first have to make sure you have Docker installed. It doesn't tell you anything like make sure you have Docker installed because it's instructions on a medium site. It's not going to tell you obvious things like that, but I'm going to tell you make sure you have Docker installed. How do you make sure you have Docker installed? Docker hyphen V. And it tells me I have Docker version 20.10.5 build whatever running so I'm good now I'm going to run my docker command and my docker command is I'm going to try to copy it here docker build t I forget what that is my my SQL oh tag right so we're See, this is really annoying. Why would I want to tweet that? <laughs> I mean, how stupid is this? No. 
it wants me to highlight no oh oops <laughs> uh, undo close tab uh, uh oh there we go wow okay so okay so build a container so we're gonna build a container Tag it my MySQL and the dot indicates we're building it from the current directory. Dot in Linux means current directory. And so it's going to look in the current directory for a file called Docker file. Um, so it's a little opaque, but you get the idea. So there's the command. So it's going to run these three commands. And it didn't like it. The Docker daemon is not running. Huh. All right. Well, I'm in Windows. The way you start Docker in Windows is you go to Docker Desktop and click on it. Possibly I could just type Docker here. And that would work. So now we're going to get some messages down here at the bottom of the screen. Saying basically Docker is starting. It's going to give me a warning. Because. Oh it might not give me that warning. Okay. And uh, I sometimes run. Uh, yeah it is running down there. You can see it right down in the corner there. Uh. I sometimes use local directories as volumes and Docker itself runs in Windows subsystem for Linux and that combination is scary to it. All right, now Docker is running. Let's try that command again. That's much better. Pretty fast, eh? So uh, the SQL image, I had already downloaded it from a previous project. That's why it was right handy. And so it ran these commands. Uh, and uh, yeah. One of two from Docker, two of two. Where's my third? It didn't run my third command. That seems wrong. No, okay. From Docker. That still seems wrong. See, it only lists two commands. Now I might be giving myself a problem here, but so let's flag that. And if we have a problem later on, that might be the cause. Let's see. Okay. So we built it. Now we're going to run it. Okay. Uh, this is trickier. All right, so this is the first part of the command. Control C to copy that. Go down and I'll paste it in here. And now this will be the second part of the command. backwards to and even that sometimes doesn't work all right so yeah see what all this indicates is that is the line continues onto the next line um, but if I put the whole command on one line <laughs> then I don't need that slash. So, okay, we have docker run hyphen D means detach so that it'll run in the background. The P is port mapping map port 3306 to 3306, which means the uh, program inside the container 3306 
which is the MySQL program, will be available outside the container on port 3306 um, so, so that I could use it with an external application. Name, MySQL, E, environment. So MySQL root password, super secret, and then MySQL is the tag from the image that I'm building. So let's run that. Error response. Failed port is already allocated. Really? Oh, I must have something else running. Yes, I have Grasshopper running. <laughs> All right. That's why. Now, I, I could... So, okay. So, 3306 is already being used. Here it is. By uh, my, my existing Grasshopper database. But this should work. 3305. Oh, you have to remove or rename that container to be able to reuse that name. So, my MySQL 2. Oops, okay. Name my MySQL 2 the little hacks right because you know there we go and that long string is the actual name for the container and if you'll notice if I run docker ps docker processes I don't see it isn't that weird I should see it. It should be running. Exited. Oh, here we go. It exited. It started and then it exited. Why did it exit? Don't know. All right. Well, let's let's try to clear the other stuff off. So that. All right. So I'll just stop Grasshopper. Um, I'll, let's delete, I'm going to delete these two containers. Okay, so these containers exist, but they're not running, so they shouldn't interfere with anything. Now, arrow key up, arrow key up, arrow key up, arrow key up, arrow key up. Okay, if I do enough arrow keys, you see my build command comes back. I'm rebuilding my container. All right, now I'm going to restart. I'm going to run my container. Oh, it didn't. There we go. I'm using 3306, my SQL, the name, etc. Now let's run that container. Right. So, is it running? Yes, it is running. So, something it was interfering with my 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 containers were colliding somehow. Now, if we come back up here, see here it is in my Docker application. Oh, but it says it exited again. Yes, it did. You know, it's not supposed to exit like that. You have an error in your SQL syntax. Reate table employee. Okay, so you see, see what I did there, quite by accident. I clicked on it and it popped open the logs. I can also inspect it, right? So, now there's probably a way to do this on Linux, but I don't know what it is. But who cares? I can see I have an error in my SQL. 
So let's go to insert data. No, create tables. Yeah, re-eight table. <laughs> let's save that. Okay. Let's try all of that again from the top. So we'll delete this. I probably don't have to do this, but I will anyways. Docker build. Docker run. Docker PS seems to be running, seems still to be running. Okay, that's much better have a look all right yeah this is what we like to see ready for connection sitting there on port 3306 that's the happy news right that's what we're looking for all right now we can verify okay we will exec inside the container I've had issues with this exec command in the past but Let's see. First of all, let's see if I can actually copy it. There we go. Control C. Um, so what, what this is saying is that exec means to execute a command inside the MySQL container. Now where I've had issues is with these ITs I forget exactly what they stand for, but putting them together like that has generated errors for me. And then bash is the name of the terminal type, the bash terminal that I'm executing. So basically, it'll open up a terminal inside the container. Really handy if you're working with these things. So let's do that. Okay, okay, well, I'm in, all right? I can tell that I'm in because my prompt changed. Here's my prompt from before. Here's my prompt now. And so if I do an ls, you can see I'm at the root directory of this container. So, MySQL. All right, so remember we set my password up here as super secret. So now I want to run the command mysql u root so what that means is user and then you don't leave a space root and then dash p to indicate that i'm using a password so well, let's do that mysql u root password super secret and i'm in so now let's check show databases and if you get that which i do all the time it's because you forgot to put the semicolon on the end of your command there's our databases and we can run any sql command we want so like show tables that's why you need the semicolon. You're actually running commands. Oh, we have to use the database, right? So you, we're going to use company. And then show tables. Yeah. Was that actually in there or did I just skip it? Oh, yeah. Here we go. Use company. And then show tables. Show columns from employees. All right, so again, we'll see that again. All right, so that works. So we have our customized MySQL database Docker image. This is a great solution for local development by multiple da -da 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 -da. Not always the best. If you insert a lot of data, your image size will grow significantly. Well, duh and you need to build a new image when you want to update the data. Well, yeah. Um, that's why there is another way to customize your Docker MySQL. 
use bind mounts to customize your MySQL database in Docker. All right. In this last section, we will simply mount the scripts inside the official MySQL Docker container. Okay. So, here we have a much longer run command, right? And so what we're doing, it starts off like it did before, but now here's the volume with my scripts and it's linked, boy that's annoying, it's linked uh, to Avant to the well, okay, let's be clear. Here's a reference to the directory in my uh, sir on my computer, and it's linked to a directory. This is it here inside the container, and they're calling it docker entry point init db.d. Okay, and now the and then we're setting the database and the password is environment variables and yeah and then we're calling the whole thing mysql and we can verify again so okay so let's go back so let's review what we did before So our Docker file was to copy it and then we ran it and it was just there. Yeah, isn't that interesting? I mean, that's why I couldn't find it before when I was looking for it before. See, half of my time in, in doing this stuff is trying to wrap my head around what I did. So, and that's why I have to stop and review and just make sure I understand. And, and not understand in the sense of I can follow the steps and it works, but understand in the sense of, uh, you know, I uh, I can follow the steps it works and I know why it worked so made the docker file built right I built it I'm, I'm gonna do the whole thing again because I'm bothered I, there's something I don't understand Oh, I see. I get it. Got it. If you, I guess, I guess, this is new to me. If you put an SQL script here in docker entry point init db.d, your MySQL script will automatically use that as your entry point. You don't have to run a command or anything. You just put the script in that directory. That's what it's got to be. This doesn't say that anywhere, by the way. And honestly, it's not something I knew before. And it's still a guess, to be quite honest with you. It's a guess, but I'm pretty sure that's got to be it. So that's why here, all right, I'm not going to actually have to move my file into that directory. So I'm not actually going to have to run, where'd it go? I won't have to run, I won't strictly have to run this copy command. Uh, 
But okay, let's follow. Yeah, okay, I think I know what's going on here. All right, so let's remove, let's just shut down this container. See, well, let's see what he said here first. Okay. Okay, we verified it works, blah, 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 blah. Okay, because if I just run this, okay, he hasn't said here, stop it, turn it off, or anything like that. But I know from previous experience that if I just try to run it again, using this script, it's going to fail. Um, so I'm going to stop, and I should actually remove this previous container. So let's stop it. Let's remove it. Yeah. Now, I don't know if I have to build over, rebuild all over again or not, but now first things first, let's just see if I can't run this as a four line command and not worry about removing all of those slashes. So this might not work just because of the slashes. Let's see. I totally didn't like that. Docker invalid reference format. The term hyphen V is not rec right. Okay, so the slashes. Okay. <laughs> I do have to remove all the slashes to make this work. In other environments, in other places, that might work fine, but well, I have to remove them. So I'll need a working area. This is where I use note tab all the time. It's just a simple text editor that just works. And let's turn on word wrap. Just making sure I've got all my ducks in a row here. All right, there's no space, right? Yeah, I need to make sure there's no space in between this hyphen and this E. It's a little hard to see there. But all right, so now I'll copy that. And I'll paste it in here all as one single command with the slashes removed. Hit enter, and it likes it. Uh, docker ps we have a docker container running now just like before we can do the exec in so let's do that of course it's going to we know it's going to work because I because it worked before and it's the same docker file so I'm going to run a little test in a moment here, but uh, first thing I want to do is run the EXEC and make sure it's working. Uh, where did it go? Here we go. Control C. Now uh, we'll run that command. We're in my SQL. Right. Um, my SQL. You root P super secret. All right. And uh, let's see use company list tables I have an error in my SQL syntax show tables empty 
empty set. Oh. Maybe it was a different name. Employees. Uh, hmm. Company. Databases company. Use company. It should not be empty like that. Uh, hmm. Let's exit. All right. Now let's. What was it? Show databases. I'm thinking maybe the name of the database got changed somewhere in the new configuration. Show databases. Okay. Use company. Show tables. Nope, that's wrong. That's not what should be happening. I should not have an empty set there. So, why? What happened? What went wrong? Uh, we have another database called MySQL. I wouldn't think that's it. tables yeah see they're still using master and slave terminology oh is it not on all right my doctor file hasn't been saved I don't think I made any changes to it. That shouldn't be the problem. Hmm. I'm puzzled. All right. Let's go back and see if there's something that they've done wrong that maybe I can find. The volume. So SQL scripts Docker entry point. All right, well, let's see what went into that Docker entry point. So we'll list the directories here. CD to Docker entry point. List what's in here, and there's nothing in here. So that's probably could be my problem. Nothing there. Okay, well, I know there shouldn't be anything there. Maybe I accidentally altered that file before. Okay, let me, let me explain where I was doubting before. So, here I have a volume, and I shouldn't need to copy my files over. You see, in the original Docker file, I'm copying into this right but 
if I'm simply declaring it as a volume, no, no, you'd still copy it over, wouldn't you? Yes, you would. Yeah. I wonder if there's anything in the logs that'll explain. Nothing explains it here. Huh. Well, it's nice that one version works. I don't know why the other one doesn't. Maybe it's something different in the way. I mean, it's two years old, three years old now, this, this article. But it shouldn't really change that much. They go, all need to store their scripts in a certain directory on their local machine and need to point to that directory when they run it off. See, this would be, a, be really nice. Oh, oh, okay. I see the problem. Linux format. This isn't a... Microsoft Windows type of uh, directory. This is a Linux type of directory. And this actually refers to where my home account is. So, but of course, I have, that's not where I've put it at all. Now, different ways of, of approaching this. I could put uh, D colon backslash code projects blah 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 or what I've been doing and has been working although not 100% of the time is well it's, it's always worked for me but it hasn't worked for other people so but I've just been putting in a dot so okay well first let's kill this Let's kill this guy. All right. Remove. Okay. Now, let's come back to that run command. It's real long, so it'll be easy. Okay. So there's the run command. I wish this was bigger so that you could see it better. I still don't know how to make this text bigger f for these uh, screens. Just, I have no idea. Oh, zoom in. Oh, view. Where'd that, where did that go? <laughs> oh, it's gone. Zoom in. It was like control plus equals or something like that. And now it's gone. <laughs> it was somewhere. I wish I could just, you know, rewind my own video and find out where it went. It was in view, I'm sure. Oh, appearance? Yeah. Here we go, and zoom in. Okay. Oh, that's much better. Now you can really see it. Duh. All right. So, here I am. Here's my command. Right? Okay, it's, it's getting all a bit hard to see here. Uh, 
Let's All right. There we go. Okay, so there's my prompt. Now, let's get my command up. There's my command. Okay, so you see it down there. So, I'm going to backspace through this all the way back to the volumes. Now, we see I am in my MySQL. And that's just a dot. So, okay. So now, what I'm saying is my local script is dot and then the subdirectory. And that's what should map to the container. This should work. <laughs> I've said that before. All right, so it's running. So let's try to get into it. All right. No, MySQL user named root, no space, and I'm using a password, super secret. So, show databases, there they are, that's a good sign, companies at the top, well I guess it was there before, right? so use company, okay, show tables, still an empty set. So it might not have liked. Um, don't see any. Don't see any errors. Mounts, ports, volumes. Yeah. see my volumes defined at all even Let's see this is my environment database password pass my mounts oh yeah Let's see here's docker entry point var live docker volumes SQL scripts hyphen data That should have worked, honestly. Uh, so, there's my SQL scripts. Should have worked. slash on the end of that. I don't think I do, but maybe. There's, you know, there's something here. You know, I don't know what it is. So here I'm just grasping at straws. Somebody who actually knows what they're doing probably knows what the problem was. So let's delete this again. All right, remove. And so we'll try my latest theory, which is I need a slash here. No, nope, not there. 
here. Everything else should work. All right. Let's go into it. Uh, MySQL. This is really good practice, right? Because each time I do this, I remember it a bit better. Uh, okay, so. Use company. Show tables. Nothing. Don't know what it is. Don't know why it wouldn't work like that. But I know if I don't use the volume, it'll work fine. Maybe it's because it is copying it. That could be. Because if it's copying it, we might end up with permission issues. I know that that happened, actually happened with somebody who was using the Grasshopper system. So, uh, So what, what do I mean? You see, I'm copying here. Let's remove that from my Docker file. Control S. Now let's try. And we'll, we'll go back to the initial state, which means we'll remove this. I still know the other thing is right. All right, so we have to do that. Oh, forgot to uh, remove the other one. So let's remove this. Remove. All right. Now we'll try running it. It's running. Would I need to rebuild it? Yeah, I might. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's try. That's right. Okay, I'm going to close this off. I'm going to try rebuilding it first. So we'll go all the way back to the build command. It's, there it is. Okay, so I'm going to build it. Okay. Now, I have not copied anything into the container. It's going to have to use the volume. <laughs> okay, so now I'll try to run it with the volume, with the SQL scripts properly indicated. And it looks good. So now I'll try to exec into it. And I'm in it. My SQL user root with a password. Super secret password. Use company. Okay. Yeah, I bet you that's it. Show tables. Empty set. Okay, so what I'm trying to do here is I'm looking at the shell command for the entry point. 
Okay. This is all the stuff that runs when the uh, container starts up. And then the uh, MySQL starts up. Didn't help me much. Let's see if I can see anything inside that directory. Whoops, not our directory. Docker. And there's probably nothing in it. Yeah. See, that's the problem. There should be something in it. And there's nothing in it. And I don't know why. that long command again. Probably don't even need that second command in the docker file. I did this. Control S. <laughs> Build it. Let's try running it. Okay, it's running. Let's go into it. My SQL. Oops. These are root the password which is still super secret um, show databases company still there but CD use company show tables Still empty. Try one more thing and then I'm giving up. Okay. I wonder if the person watching is still watching and if they have any advice. Uh, yeah. Oh, we have two. We had two people watching. Uh, but we have no comments. So, no advice from the watcher. <laughs> See, I've been at this now for an hour and 24, right? And this is what happens with Docker, right? It's so frustrating. And I actually copied this literally. try the full because uh, I know this should work I think I say that I know this should work all right
Because <laughs> there are my scripts. Now, let's. Okay, the it's been ended. All right. What I'm doing now is I'm replacing the nice little dot with the full D code projects, etc. So there's no possibility that we're getting the wrong directory. All right, there's that error message that I often get. I wasn't getting it that before. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is going to work. I know that because I know the sharing's happening. <laughs> All right. In it into the uh, into here and my SQL dollars u root the password. Still super secret. Okay. And use company. Show tables. There it is. Okay. So the cause of my problem was that when I was running that run command, it wasn't using the dot properly. It wasn't finding my directory properly. And so it just fails silently, right? Um, so I should be able to just use it like that. Oh, right, nice. Never mind. Exit. Exit. So let's look. See, so yeah, that should have worked. Hmm. Because I know, you see, why do I know it should have worked? Because, let's go into my grasshopper folder. See, I use Docker Compose in Grasshopper, and see, there it is the dot HTML, and that maps to uh, the other directory. Oh, but the other directory doesn't have a slash at the end of it. I wonder if that was the problem the extra slash. That's a good theory. Let me test that. So we'll go back to where we were. <laughs> Forgotten where we were. <laughs> Project Docker. My MySQL. Okay. Right. Okay. So. All right, so let's make sure this is turned off. It's turned off, remove. Okay, so the theory I'm testing is that we don't have a slash at the end of this. And, although well, this worked, right? <laughs> That's what it looks like in my uh, Docker Compose file, but I have my doubts. Super secret. 
throat's getting hoarse. Use company. Show tables. Yeah, nothing. Okay, so if I want to do it the other way, I have to uh, I have to use the full database. But you know, I wonder if I can't write a Docker Compose file that does it that way, the way I did with my other Docker Compose file. So let's do that. So let's go to let's open folder. We'll go to Grasshopper. I'm just going to copy it from the Docker Compose file there. Okay. All right. Oh, and that's how I did it before. Init entry point init db. Well. <laughs> No. Yeah. That's exactly what I was doing before, except now I'm just using a different. Uh, that's why I couldn't ever find it before. Remember when we started? I was looking at how do I do that? How did I make that work? I can't remember how I made that work. Well, because I was using this. I was mapping this volume. I was actually using the solution that this article recommends. I was mapping my local directory to the remote directory. So my problem was now that, okay, I wanted to build this. So that's what I should be doing. Yeah. Okay, so okay here here's here's how it all works out for me now. Um, this is right, except I want to. Build this. You see what I want ultimately what I want is docker compose without a build so that people don't have to mess around with the database file so when they do that they simply you see it's they just it uses this downs grasshopper image from docker and it uses this sql image from sql so what I want to do is I want to build an image and I might as well build the image the way they built it to start with and then I want to load that image in Docker in, in the Docker Hub so okay so if I was going to do that, the way I would do it, and so let's see now, open folder again, back to Docker, my MySQL. Okay, so Control Z. Oops. Oh, it's not going to remember all all the previous commands. That's okay. So. I would just go all the way back up here. Um, okay. All right, I'm making my Docker file. So, oops. Control C. So, except I'd make you know make my SQL database grasshopper 
SQL scripts, the letter, da 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 da. Um, you know, it'd be my init script from the Grasshopper file, right? And uh, so I'd, I'd build that. Control S. So I build it, and I could run it to test it. But then I'd have to. Then I need to tag it and load it to the Docker Hub, which is a separate process, and you know, kind of beyond the scope of this uh, of this tutorial. So okay, and then I don't need to worry about volume mounts for the database. Uh, it's really not necessary. The database will still persist um, because it, it'll handle that internally. I assume that that's true. Uh, well, I know it's true because I, I know it does on my existing Grasshopper installation. Um, and then there's stuff about how to back up that database. And that's how I would actually make new databases is I back up old ones and then save those and build new images out of those old ones. A little awkward, but it works and uh, yeah, but while I'm, you know, if I were writing SQL script to build my database, if I was just writing that directly, then this volume mount would really help a lot. But I'm not. I'm working with the system, you know, creating, for example, creating pages using my editor and then saving that as the database. So, all right, but I'll that's a whole different story so what have we learned today we have learned that this person works completely Lorenz Van Hillo thanks for the article Lorenz uh, I wish that you use something besides Linux so that you knew that other stuff exists well I'm sure you know other stuff exists but you know you can't just throw stuff like this and expect people to be able to use it. And especially, you know, when we get to long, complicated things like this four liner, five liner, right? And the problem is here. Uh, that's a problem. Also, I really hate this. Really, really hate, you know, when, when we just. The, the, the little, the little pop-up, right? Because it, it takes control of the page away from me, and I don't like that at all. Um, but that's medium. That's not you, and there's nothing you can do about it. So I'm going to wrap it up here. I've got a clear idea in my head. I've learned things, and especially what I've learned is that uh, putting an SQL file into this directory in a MySQL image that uses the uh, MySQL uh, base image will load the SQL for you. Who knew? I've never seen that in the doc. Well, no, I must have seen it in the documentation somewhere because I did it, but it's never really been clear to me that this is what you're doing, that this is what happens. Uh, so, but you do have to set your environment variables to make that work. And that's what I did in Grasshopper as well. And uh, we can go, it doesn't matter because, you know, this is all, you know, I'm using all temporary stuff anyways. But uh, if we go here to Grasshopper, we, you know, you see here's all my environment variables. You know, default plain text, uh, easily hackable. So you will change this on your Docker Compose, I would hope. Um, call your database whatever you want, but uh, you know, yeah. But here's your volume. See now, 
this actually works even with the other person so that that's pretty cool but yeah so I can by changing this I basically changed yeah, I, c I can do it that way too eh? and then uh, but I still want to save the image so that you just download the image and you have everything you're not messing around with putting SQL files in directories or, or cloning from git or anything like that I want it simple 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 Okay, that's it. That's what I've learned today. Took me an hour and a half to learn that. At this rate, I'll be a billion years old before I understand Docker. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot, everyone. I'll see you next time. This is Stephen Downs, and this has been Stephen Follows Instructions. <laughs>